Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, once again, I'm tearing apart a perfectly good running driving Jeep to upgrade it. The old Dana 44 in the CJ5 is getting a lock right locker. Went ahead and jacked up the back and put it on jack stands. I went ahead and pulled my wheels and tires off. Now your Jeep might look a little different than mine. Mine's got these disc brakes on it. If you're curious about how to do this to your Jeep, I've got a whole video on it. I'll throw like the thumbnail up here or something. It's really cheap, it's really easy, and the braking upgrade is just insane. To put one of these lockers in, you pretty much gotta pull the whole axle apart. There's just a few things you don't have to fool with. Brakes have gotta come off, and this exhaust I just put on, I might go ahead and pull that muffler off and the tailpipe, just get out of my way. I think I'm gonna start by tearing into this side. These calipers and rotors come off pretty easy the way this kit's set up. There's just two bolts that hold this on. I'll tie it up out of the way and then the rotor will come off. caliper out of the way the rotor just slides right off now i can take this grease cap off and holding this nut on there's a cotter pin right here that's got to be removed Now to remove this nut, you're going to need a 1 and 7 16th socket. If you don't have an impact, you need to make sure that you loosen these before you take the wheels and tires off because otherwise it's just going to spin with the hub. So I got my pneumatic puller hooked up here. They do make an actual hub puller that pulls on the lug nuts, which is a lot better than this. You probably don't want to pull on this hub. You might end up bending it or something. I'm gonna go real slow and be careful and be easy with it. I just tied this off not long ago, so it should come off easy. If you've got a really old hub though that hasn't been off in a really long time, this probably isn't the best ideal. I was on a little tighter than I thought it was. I guess it's because it wasn't torqued down the last time I took it off, but when I put it back on, I torqued it down correctly. I wasn't thinking I should have put that nut back on to keep it from flying off like it did. It didn't hurt nothing. This is my caliper bracket from that disc brake conversion kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all this stuff off too. And then the fun part is actually getting this shaft pulled out. Something important to keep up with is what shims go on which side. So this big plate right here is actually a shim. The way this axle works is your bearings are pressed into the end of the axle tubes right here. And these shims set the preload on it to keep everything balanced and the correct preload on these bearings. So you gotta keep up with left and right what shim goes where. So you can look up different videos on how to pull these axles. You can pull against this right here, I believe and get this axle to come out. I've had good luck in the past with the slide hammer. So I've got this little just piece I've made up here. It's got a hole big enough to go on the axle. Tighten this nut up as tight as you can get it. I put the washer that comes off this axle behind here just to keep it from messing up anything on this keyway or anything. And then right here, I've got a hole big enough to put my slide hammer in. It'll go in like that right there. And hopefully this axle will come loose. Now 
That wasn't too bad. I've fought with them a lot more than what that one took. I think having everything real tight on your puller is the main thing. You want as little slop as possible, tighten everything up as tight as you can get it. And that way as much force as you can is going into pulling the shaft out. And what you're really pulling out is this right here, this bearing cup. So maybe this makes a little bit more sense now. This drives in right here. And other than this outer stuff I took off that retains it and that shim, you know, this is what your axle kind of pushes up against to hold it in there. And here is our driver side axle shaft. Everything looks pretty good on it. I have seen, you look straight down this and these splines will be kind of offset all around here where people about twisted them off. I think everything looks good with this one though. That's all I gotta get done on this side. Axle shaft is out. So everything you saw me do on this side, I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. There's no reason really seeing it twice. Once I get that knocked out, I'm going to pop that diff cover off and I'll see what I'm working with in there. Got both sides done now. Axle's pulled out. I'm ready to take this diff cover off. I'm kind of excited and kind of nervous to see what I find under here. So far, so good. Doesn't look too bad. At least there's oil in it. It don't look like a milkshake or like it's full of water or anything. It does look a little old, but it doesn't look terrible. Now that I got that off, it's important not to get too carried away with taking stuff apart. So this needs to go back together exactly like it is right now. And it's important where these caps right here end up at, these need to go back exactly how they are. So what you can do, you can take a punch or I take a little drill bit and I put me a little dimple right there and a little dimple over here on the housing. So that way you know dot, dot, top, top, top left. Same thing over here, I do two dots on the right and then right there on the housing, I got two dots. Now that I got my caps marked, I can pull them four bolts out, take them caps off, and just pull this whole carrier out. I went ahead and hit this with some brake clean. I hit it with brake clean before I pulled it out too. Just trying to get some more of that oil off of it. The less oil you got on here, the better. So before I go pulling this apart, I gotta take this ring gear off to get to this pin up under here to knock it out. It's a good idea to try and scribe a line somewhere on here. So, so however you can get a mark on here, I'm gonna use this Sharpie and hopefully when I get done, this mark will still be on everything. Now, the reason I gotta take this ring gear off is this pin right here, that has to drive out to get all your spider gears and everything out of here. So in order to get that pin out, this ring gear's gotta come off. To get this off, these are gonna be an 11 16 socket. Usually there's like uh, some tabs been up here, some locking tabs to keep these from backing out. I don't know if later models got away from that.
Sometimes the marine gears will just fall off when you take that last bolt out. That one's a little snug. You don't want to hit on it with metal. Just use like a little rubber hammer or brass hammer or something. Just give it a little tap. It should just fall right off of there. So now I got that off. Right here, there's a little roll pin in there. And that shaft I was talking about, that roll pin is what retains that. So you need to go ahead and dry that roll pin out and then that shaft will just knock out. That punch wasn't hardly long enough. It did start getting it out right there. But the next best thing I found, I just took a nail and ground the head down on it. And there's that roll pin. Set that aside, because we're gonna have to put it back in there when we get done. Now I got that roll pin out of the way. It shouldn't take much to get this pin right here out. Still probably don't want to use steel on steel, but that's gonna move pretty easy. I'll get my nail back here. Got that shaft knocked out. This right here is like a little center spacer deal that kind of sets down in the middle somewhere right there. This gets reused too, so set it to the side. And now it should be as easy as just rotating this gear. Yep, and these walk around to the side. There's that one in the back. Grab this one and then this other one lifts out. And there'll be a thrust washer on both of these. You gotta save these, we're gonna be reusing them too. Now that I got everything out of this carrier, got an empty carrier, I'm ready to put the locker in. The locker I'm gonna be using is this lock right from Power Tracks. Of course, it comes with a cool sticker and the how-to manual. So what's in the box? Well, there's an upper and lower, which I don't think it matters which is which. So you're gonna have these pieces, this little spacer and the slots just line up with each other. This will be an upper or lower and then the other side's the exact same way. There's a new cross shaft, like that one I drove out, that the roll pin goes through. And then there's some pins and some big springs and some little springs that go inside the big springs. Something I almost forgot to show y'all too is when you take your diff cover off, there'll probably be one of these tags. And you can't see it on the front side really. It's too pitted up and old and everything. But it looks like the gear ratio on this is maybe 427. 538 would be ideal, but I guess the later ones, they started going to higher ratios for better like highway performance and stuff. First thing I need to do is grab one of these. And I'm gonna take this lower section here or upper section, like I said, same difference. I've got my assembly goo here and I like this stuff. The instructions do say like a medium grease, but this is designed to break down and it's a lot tackier than grease. And I've put a bunch of stuff together and I've still got a big old tub of it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on the underside right here. Just a thin coat. And then I'm gonna take one of these thrust washers. Now these came out of this right here. You gotta make sure you take these off and save them. That's gonna go on and then a little bit more of this stuff. And then this 
goes upside down like that right there. And that'll drop in right here. Give it a little spin, make sure everything's sitting down like it's supposed to. Then I'll grab the other half and do the same thing. All right, and I got a good coating on that. This one's gonna go on the upper side. Give it a little twist. And that's what your grease, part of the reason you want that grease is to hold it in place like that right there. Now in these pieces, there's gonna be holes and then there's these slotted places. So in the slotted places, you're gonna wanna take a pin, put a little bit of grease or that assembly goo on it. And then just stick that down in that hole right there. And those should pretty much go flush. Then grab this little middle piece here. Like I said, that just lines up with that slot. And go ahead and set that in. Kind of line it up with them cogs with them teeth right there. Do the same thing with the other side. Find them slotted holes. And then, of course, that'll go upside down to the first one. I'm going to rotate this where this slotted portion right here lines up with where the shaft goes at. The shaft is just barely poking through the center right now. I can just start seeing it coming through. So as I push this in, I'm gonna lower this little center section piece in, this little spacer. Now that I've got the shaft put in here, that'll keep everything held together. You got that little spacer in the middle, everything's good. I can go ahead and put this roll pin back in. Now here's the part that might get a little tricky. So everywhere those slotted holes are that we put those pins in, you're gonna take a little pick or a screwdriver and you're gonna work that down into the lower section. Just like that, it'll drop down and see the hole right there. Then you're gonna take a little spring and a big spring, and you might wanna put just a little bit of that assembly lube or grease on it. Maybe just help hold these together. You're gonna take them two springs and that's gonna drop down in that slot. Take your pick or your screwdriver and you're gonna work that thing in. And you'll hear it snap into that detent. There's a detent up top right here. A little recess, they'll capture it. And then it's just rinse and repeat. You gotta do that four more times. By the time you get to the last spring, you'll be a master at this. I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out real quick. All 
All right, so all the springs are in, the pins are in, everything is assembled. Everything that comes in that box, I've got put in here now. I'm not out of the woods yet. There's one more thing you gotta check before I can put the ring gear back on, throw this thing back in. Right here in the instructions, it says the distance between the halves of the lock right, that is between the two drivers, should be about 530 seconds or 152 thousandths. The tolerance limits between them are 145 to 170. So it's talking about this distance right here, this gap. I gotta measure that real quick. I don't have my calipers with me, but I do have some feeler gauges. That right there is 145. And I'll probably go a little bit more. So I know I'm at least at 145. It couldn't take much more than that. So 145, 150 range, I'll say, which is in spec. Now, if this came up, maybe too narrow or too wide, either way, you've got them shim washers that you can fool with. Now, in some cases, the carrier could be so worn out that's just too big. And you could still probably maybe fix that with the thrust washers, but that's really the adjustment you got here. I'm in good shape, so I'm good to put that ring gear back on. Now, I gave this a real good clean with some brake clean. Got as much oil out of them holes as I could because Loctite is not going to stick to oil. You really got to degrease all this stuff real good. And I've still got my mark. Make sure you don't wash that off when you're cleaning this up. That should go right over here somewhere. The bolts are the same way. Spray them down real good. Got all that oil off of them. Some things you can be a little lazy on. Don't be lazy on this. You want to really get this stuff cleaned up because you want this Loctite to stick. I saw a video the other day, somebody broke down in like a newer Gladiator or something and the rear end had locked up. And when they towed it back, took it apart, come to find out a bunch of the bolts to the ring gear had backed out where they didn't set it back upright. Now I'm using red Loctite and a lot of people are scared of it. I ain't scared of it. It'll come back apart. Got my ring gear back on and i'll just run through it one more time real quick with y'all degrees everything get as much oil off as you can degrees the hardware red lock tight locking tabs if you need them you can buy like reproduction ones too i do lock tight and the locking tab because them tabs i mean they they're not that hard to bend and then all these get torqued down i do them in a star pattern 38 to 42 foot pounds I went ahead and threw that carrier back up in there. It goes back in the same way it comes out and it's tight coming out and it's tight going back in. So just take a dead blow or something like that. Take your time, it'll go back in there. And then torque the bolts down. It looks like originally in the repair manual, the bearing cap bolts was like 35 to 50 or 32 to 50 or something like that. But then in the 60s, they changed it, and then it was like 70 to 90 foot-pounds. So I did them 80. That seemed pretty dang tight, and I'm not worried about them coming out. Now, before you put your carrier in there, you need to, and this is what I did, take some brake clean and spray all that out. Get as much of that old oil out of there as you can. Take a wire wheel, hit all this right here, get rid of all the old gasket and everything. You want a clean surface. You literally want to be able to eat off of it. And then just spray everything down with a brake cleaner. Get as much oil and everything you want. Bare metal. And obviously you want to do that before you put all this in there so none of that trash gets in on there. And so you can clean the inside of that housing out really good. Same thing with the cover. You can about eat off that thing. It didn't take five minutes with a wire wheel and some brake clean. That thing cleaned up real good. I ain't too worried about this side because the rest of the axle looks pretty rough. So... 
I figure that's good enough. I do kind of wish I had some new hardware for it, but that's no big deal. So to put this back on, you can get a gasket if you want to. I've never had much luck with the gaskets. I really like this stuff right here, the right stuff from Permatex. This is the one minute. They also have like a 90 minute, I want to say. This is all AutoZone had at the time. It is silicone, but like I've done gaskets on all kinds of stuff, transmissions, transfer cases. I'll do the gaskets, I'll dress them and everything, and they still leak. This stuff right here, no gasket needed. You just put this stuff on real thick. And this cover actually has like grooves, which is pretty cool. And put some down in there and really seal this thing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cover done up. Put it back on, let it be curing, even though this only says it takes one minute to return to service. Then while it's sitting there curing, I can go ahead and throw these axles back together. Cleaned this up some, got rid of some of the old grease and everything that was in here. These axles have a grease zert right here, so you can grease these bearings. I tried to clean this up some, and I put some fresh grease in it. It's kind of hard to pack it correctly without pressing it off, and I just don't really want to do that. When you're putting your axle shafts back in, do your best to try and keep it off the tube because you're just gonna kind of drag some trash and dirt potentially and then put it in your carrier. It's gonna happen, there's nothing you can do about it, but just try and do your best to not scrape a bunch of trash as you push that in. Here's my bearing cup. I got all my hardware cleaned up back here. These are kind of wild looking. It's kind of like a teardrop shape, but that way you don't have to put a wrench on the back of it or anything. Put my shim on. And your shims will probably look different than this one. The other side is a whole stack of them. This just happens to be one big one. Now I can put my caliper bracket back on. I went ahead and got some new rear axle seals. Those ones are super old. They might be the original ones. And these things aren't that expensive. When you're doing jobs like this where you've already tore into it anyways, just like my disc brake conversion video, kind of gave y'all a heads up, like go ahead and order this kind of stuff. You can replace it while you're doing the brakes and then you ain't got to go back and do it later. And then this is that little funnel piece. It's the last piece to go on right here. And then all the nuts and lock washers.
think I called that an axle seal. That's probably a, technically a hub seal because it seals around the hub, not around the axle. So there is a sequence to putting this back on. These are keyed hubs. So there's a little keyway down here on this axle shaft. This key has this chamfer on the end of it, and that is for the chamfer on the axle. So it's gonna go in like that right there, and it meets up with that chamfer. Now, you gotta be careful about how you put these together because if this key gets ahead of this hub, then you're pretty much ramping this up on top of the chamfer on that axle. You can end up busting this hub because there's not a lot of material right here where that keyway is. So the best way to do this is to put the hub on get it lined up with that keyway and then take your key think about what you're doing so since that keyway is on the bottom right now i need this chamfer pointing towards the axle So now I know when I put this nut back on, this hub and that key is going to pull in at the exact same time together. Everything looks good there. So there's this big washer and then that big nut. I'm going to put a ratchet on it and just tighten it up for now. But I've got to remember once everything's said and done, come back and torque these down. Now I can put my rotor back on. My wheel spacer. Get all this tightened down. Put my caliper back on. This side will be done. I got both sides buttoned back up now. Everything's back together. Nothing surprising there. And then once I got done putting them together, I went back and just made sure all of them were nice and tight. Everything was still good. Put my exhaust back on there. Now the last thing to do, and you'd be surprised how many people forget this. You gotta fill that thing back up with oil. I've got this ADW90 gear oil from Lucas. It's pretty good stuff. And I'm just going to fill this thing up till it's running back out of that fill hole right there. And this job will be done. Well, I was thinking about finishing this video, taking this thing out on the trail, the woods, the mud, down to the creek. Just really breaking in this new rear locker. Then I'm going to wait, though, make a separate video to show off the rear locker and the brakes. And just kind of see how this Jeep's performing off-road. Maybe y'all have a few suggestions for some tests, for some obstacles, something I can try out with it. Now, no surprise, I'm also putting a front limited slip in it, not a locker. And I'll get more into that when I do the video on that. Now, I might have got a little ahead of myself, got a little excited, and I had to go try out this locker. And I took it through some deep mud, and I got stuck a couple times. You might have heard facts don't care about your feelings. Well, real deep mud don't care about one rear locker. I for sure am going to need that front limited slip, maybe even a locker. I'm going to see. One more thing I wish I could have done is change out that pinion seal. I'd say by this time, most any pinion seal is leaking. I've got one on order and I'll get that thing installed later. I really appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see y'all next time.